Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my XML video tutorial. This is where I left you off, where we created our main XML file. We're going to be adding more to that. But in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover extensible style language, which I'm sure you guessed is used for styling XML. So the very first thing we're going to need to do here is go into our directory, and this is Eclipse. And if you haven't seen part one of this tutorial, definitely check it out. And I'm just going to click on Source, just like I did before, go to New. I'm going to go other, and then this little wizard that pops up is going to help me get my XSL file. And if you can't see this, view it full screen, it's an HD video. And I'm going to call this guy TV shows.xsl. Click finish. And there you go. We have a whole bunch of things just thrown right in here. Again, it's just going to have the version number, the type of encoding, the version of XSL that I'm going to be using, a whole bunch of other different things here. I'm going to get this part out of there. And then I'm going to add something in here right before template match, which I'm gonna tell you what that is here in a second. I'm gonna go XSL. Now you technically don't have to do this, but I always do it. And I'm gonna go method is equal to HTML. And all that does is sets the output type for HTML, just like you may have guessed. Then we get to XSL template match. Well, I'm gonna get a lot more into templates later on in this tutorial. Today, I'm just gonna briefly touch on it. But basically what this is saying is that all of the rules that we define in this XSL document are going to match the entire document or the root node, which in our situation is going to be TV shows. Now what I'm going to start to do here is just start going in here and defining everything that I want to show up inside of here. I'll throw an HTML tag, a head tag inside the head area. I'm going to create a title and I'm just going to call this TV shows. And then I'm going to go body and all the code that you see here on the screen is available in a link underneath of this video. So you should go get it because it's very heavily commented. Now I'm going to start using some XSL little rules that we have here. Now the first couple are not going to be all that exciting. Which as you can see, I'm doing this right inside the body section, which I'm creating here. First, I'm going to say, okay, I want to output the version for this guy. So I'm just going to type in XSL and then this is important value of we're going to be using this constantly in this tutorial and then i'm going to say what exact value i want to pull in and this is going to return just like i said before the xslt version that i'm using here and as you can see up here we know exactly what it's going to print out i'm going to put property xsl version and then close that off and then end it with a break statement and then i'm actually going to copy this because the next thing that i print out isn't going to be that much different and don't worry we're going to get into a lot of more cool usable things. Let's say that I want to print out the vendor, which in this situation is going to be libxml2, which is a toolkit that was developed from the GNOME project. But again, don't you know, have no reason to remember that. Again, we're just going to use system property, except in this situation, we're going to change this to vendor instead of version. And then vendor URL. Again, this is going to be very simple. We're just going to go in here and type in vendor dash URL. So that's how to pull some specific information in regards to what XSL file you're using. Now we're going to get into some more interesting things that you're going to use on an ongoing basis. Now let's say I want to cycle through all of the nodes that are currently on the screen and then print out certain information or all the information that is contained inside of those XML nodes or elements, whatever you want to call them. Well, you're just going to type in XSL for each and then you're going to go select. Remember, like I said, you're going to want to remember this tool here. And then I'm going to specifically pull information from TV show, which is the root element, and then show itself. And if we bounce over to our XML file, you can see just that. TV show, there's the root element, and then this is the information I want to pull in. So I want to pull in all of the information that is contained between each of these show opening tags and closing tags. And it's going to act just like a for loop if you are used to using for loops in other computer programming languages. And then I'm going to close that guy off and I'm going to start pulling in some information. Now one thing that would be kind of useful is if I would have a series of links across the top of the page and whenever the user clicked on one of those links it would zoom down into the document to that specific information. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to use a function called generate ID. I'm going to need an anchor tag of course. H reference is going to be equal to. And I'm going to put number sign inside of here. And then if I want to generate a unique ID for each one of these elements on this page, I'm just going to say generate ID based off of the name, which is going to be the TV show name. Put that in there and then close that off. And that's going to create the beginnings of this link for me. So now what I want to do is get the value for name or I want to get the TV show name. How do I do that? Again, XSL colon and then I say value dash 
of, and then I'm gonna type in again, select, what do I want the value of? I want the value of name. And then I'm gonna close that guy off. And there you go, I just created a series of links for all the different types of information that is contained in our XML file and printed them out to screen. This guy right here, that's what this code's gonna do. Gonna cycle through all those different elements and then output a link to each one of them that's going to be unique for every single thing on the screen. So now what I need to do is create a series of links underneath that instead of using hreference, use name, which is how you'd be able to link inside of documents. So now that I have that series of links, I'm going to actually get the data and throw it on the screen. Now I'm gonna use another for each block, just like I did before, and there's that. Now inside of this, I want to define a couple different rules. I'm gonna say that I, I want us to be able to sort everything. So to sort the results of this for each search, you just type in XSL short, select. I'm gonna sort everything based off of the name. You can sort it based off of any element that you have inside of there. I'm gonna say that my order, I'm gonna type out ascending, but ascending is the default. Of course, descending is the only other option. And then I have to decide how do I want to sort this information? Well, I'm gonna tell it that since it's a name, I wanna sort it based off of it being text. And there you go. I could also, of course, put in number, and that is the only other option. So that is going to start printing out all this information, and it's going to sort it based off of the name in ascending order. So let's go get ourselves some information. Let's say I want to go and print the name of the television show, and also we're going to generate a link back to this list that's going to start our XML file, this guy up here. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna create this H3 tag, just like I started typing here. And then instead of H reference, I'm gonna say name. And it's going to grab and get the exact same generated ID that was created in the list above. I'm gonna base it again on name, close that off, and close that off. Well then inside of this link, I'm going to want to put the name field. So I'm gonna save myself some time, just grab this guy right here. And it's gonna automatically print out the screen, the name for said television show. Another thing would be kind of neat is to be able to go in here, like I have here with the images or the poster or whatever you want to call it, for each one of these TV shows, it would be nice to go in there and automatically print out those posters. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. How you do that is you go image, which is exactly what you're going to be creating in this situation. And then I'm going to say that I want to change one of the attributes for this image. And I'm going to do that by going XSL, attribute, and I'm going to say name being source. This is the attribute that I want to be able to go in here and change. And then right after that, I'm going to define exactly what I want the value of source to be. So what am I going to do? XSL value of select, and then I need to get the H reference for poster, which is this guy. This is the attribute for poster, which is this element. So how do I get this value right here? Of course, I want to bounce in here and spell value. You right, and then I'm going to type in poster forward slash at symbol, and I'm going to say h reference. That's how you get a hold of the attribute for that. And then I'm going to close that off. And there you go. You can see in just a couple lines of code, I'm able to create a brand new image and give the attribute of source, whatever the attribute value is for the poster element in my XML file. So pretty cool. And after that's done, I'm going to throw a blurry statement in there again. See, I told you we're going to be covering a lot of stuff in this tutorial. And let's say I just want to print out all of the node information, every single thing that is assigned to that node. I'm going to say XSL value of select is equal to current. And this is a method that's going to return every single value that is stored in that element and print it out to screen. Throw another break statement in there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these different elements that you see here, like the name of the show, the release date, the end date, the network, the number of viewers, and all that, and I'm gonna write a sentence. I'm gonna create a paragraph tag here, and I'm just gonna start typing. And I'm gonna say the show, and just save myself some time. I bounce up here and grab this guy, and I can throw this in here, and it's gonna automatically take the show's name and shoot it right into our document. Continue with was, released, in, throw pastes in there again, and in this situation, I'm going to type in release, which is going to be its release date, by, throw in another call, and in this situation, I'm going to type network. And there you are. I'm just pulling those values right out of the XML document real easy. Throw a period at the end of there. Just keep on typing. It had an average 
viewership of, throw that in there again, and in this situation, gonna throw in viewers, throw in a space, million people, and then I'm gonna say it was canceled in, throw that guy in there, and type in end date, and then let the paragraph tag end itself, and then I'm gonna throw another break statement inside of there. So there you go, that's how to grab information and create sentences out of it. And then I'm gonna let this for each block end just like that. Let's file save it and see how this works. I'm gonna go over to TV shows, which is right here. Click on that, and I'm gonna go open with other, and list the little wizard that opens up. I'm gonna scroll way to the bottom and click on web browser. And there you can see, there is all the shows showing up. Here is the links to all the different parts. If I click on them, it jumps to those specific names, as you can see right there. And there is the version number, the vendor number, and all that other different information. And there's the posters that are automatically pulled online and a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's make some more stuff. Again, I'm still in the XSL file, and I'm gonna close off the end of that for each block. And let's say that we want to output all of our information into a table, which is, again, another thing that's commonly done. Well, I'm going to go table, and just to be simple, I'm just going to create a border for it, close that off, and then I'm going to go TR from a table row, and then I'm just going to type in TH, my header, and I'm going to say name, TH, and then the other thing is network. TH, and then I'm going to say viewers, and that's all I'm going to do for now. So now that I have that part of the table set up, I'm going to create another for each block inside of here and go in and start cycling through all that information. I'm just going to copy this guy just like I had before, paste that guy in there. And then I'm also going to show you how to apply different information using an if statement. So let's say that I want to go and test and only show things in our table based off of whether their release date was prior to 2006. How do I do that? XSL, if, and then I'm going to type in test, which you're going to type in every time. And then I'm going to say release. And remember previously I talked about character entities and different things that you're not able to type in. Well, less than is one of them. So I'm going to type in and, LT, and semicolon. That is going to represent the less than column. And then I'm going to type in 2006, which is what I want to test for. And then I want to close that part off. Now, for anything that meets those restraints, I'm going to come in here and type in TR, create a new table row. And then I'm going to go TD. And then what am I going to throw inside of here? A whole bunch of these value of statements. You're going to use this a lot with XSL. Just bounce that guy in there. And name is the very first thing that I actually want to show up inside of here. So I'm going to copy that, paste that in there. And then I'm going to say that I want network to also go into my table. And then the very last thing that I want showing up inside of there is viewers. And that is going to populate my table for me. Another thing you can use if you don't want to use if, and that is called choose. And choose is often used whenever you want to cover multiple different conditions. So with this, I'm going to go in here and go XSL, choose. And then I'm going to define all the different conditions in which I want to have certain things occur. So I'm going to type in XSL when, this is the condition, test is equal to release is greater than. Greater than, unlike with less than in this situation, you do not need to put its special little character code. But with less than, you absolutely have to. So let's say in this situation, I want to print out anything that has a release date greater than 2006. That is exactly how I do that. And then I'm basically going to do exactly what I do here, create another table row and a whole bunch of columns. So just paste that inside of there. Except in this situation, just to show that I got something different on here, I'm going to say background color is equal to yellow. So that's all. In this situation, we're going to have the background color be yellow for this one thing. And then let's say that I want to create another condition. So I'm just going to copy this in this situation, paste that in there. Let's say if we want to have something else happen whenever release is equal to 2006. In this situation, I'm going to type in orange. So the background color is going to be orange in that situation. And that's all that I need to do there. And then the last thing you can do with a choose conditional is to define a default. Now this isn't going to apply. I'm going to type in otherwise. That is the guy right there. This is the only other thing you can do with this. This is the default action that is going to occur for anything that was not affected by this test right here or this test right here. And it's not going to affect what was done up here with this if because that is outside of the choose area. So in this situation, we're actually going to have whichever television show was less than 2006 or had a release less than 2006 is actually going to show up twice. But that's no big deal. I just want to show you all the other different things. And also, just so you know, if you wanted to test for a release date that is not equal, 
you just put the exclamation point in there just like that. So let's get into otherwise here. In this situation, I'm just going to copy this, bounce in here, paste that in there, tab and then tab these in. And this situation, I'm going to have the background color be pink. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do with choose. So let's save this guy and let's bounce in here and actually check this out. And if I bounce in here, now you're going to see way at the bottom of the screen right here. This is the table that we just created. And remember I said there's going to be a duplicate, which in this situation, this Freaks and Geeks television show was the duplication. And you can see how all the different colors changed and the table shows up. And just so you remember, this is how you're able to bounce through all the different elements inside of our XML page. And yes, indeed, we are using an XML page here, not the XSL. The XSL file just acts as a style sheet. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover a ton of other things about XML. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.